Welcome back. Joining me now is Republican Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania. Welcome, Senator. So uh, hey, historic yeah. day at the Supreme Court. Uh, what do you think of the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade? I think it was very much the right decision, Paul. I think uh, people who are intellectually honest on both sides of the question of whether or not we should uh, permit abortions have acknowledged that Roe versus Wade uh, was really a, a very badly erroneous uh, decision. I mean, the Constitution is obviously silent on abortion. It does not confer a right to an abortion. Roe versus Wade invented that. And that was, um, that was a mistake, taking a tough, contentious, social, cultural issue out of the political process for resolution and putting it in the hands of nine justices uh, many years ago. That was just a very, very bad decision. It, they were right to reverse it, in my view. What do you think is going to happen in Pennsylvania now, politically, when it comes to abortion? This is now tossing it to the states. Uh, right. You know that state. How do you think this is going to play out in Pennsylvania? You know, I think it will be um, a, a topic, certainly a, a major topic of discussion, but only one of many in this uh, election cycle. Uh, probably gets uh, a lot of airtime in the gubernatorial race since we have a Republican legislature in the State House and the State Senate, and that's likely to continue to be the case. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think people sometimes exaggerate the likely political impact. The fact is, in Pennsylvania, as in most of the country, people's are, opinions are divided and they're nuanced. Um, there are roughly comparable numbers of people who consider themselves pro-life as those that consider themselves pro-choice. There's a big majority of people that think it's reasonable to have some restrictions on abortion. Uh, Pennsylvania is not a state that would be likely to have a complete and total ban with no exceptions. That's not likely to pass the legislature. So, you know, there'll be a lot of debate and discussion. Um, I think Pennsylvania will probably iterate its way to something that roughly reflects a consensus. And would that be something that says, okay, there are more, more limits on abortion than currently exist under Roe, but maybe not a total ban? I would think that's the most likely outcome. Now, I'm personally pro-life, and I, I would support a prohibition with very few exceptions, but that's, that's probably not where the political consensus will uh, end up landing. Now, uh, Chuck Schumer saying that, and Nancy Pelosi saying that abortion is going to be on the ballot nationwide uh, here. They clearly think this is going to be their winner in the election. Uh, do you think uh, it could cost the Republicans control of the House and the Senate? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. As I said, you know, uh, Americans are divided. If you look at the competitive states, uh, people are divided in those states. You know, it's going to energize pro-life voters to come out and vote. There, Sure, there'll be some more energy among people who feel very strongly about the pro-choice point of view. But there's a lot of other issues that matter to everybody. Uh, inflation is, is like a universally relevant issue, and it's a huge concern. And everybody understands that the wildly irresponsible uh, policies of the Biden administration and the Democrats have driven inflation to these 40-year highs. Th those kinds of issues, a lack of control at the border, uh, badly flawed foreign policy, uh, th this crime wave running across the country. I mean, there are a lot of front burner issues that I think are going to um, uh, really drive huge Republican successes this fall. Uh, there's one other Supreme Court uh, uh, issue, obviously a major gun decision this week, right. but the Senate gun bill, you voted for that, which, is, which has passed the Senate. Why'd you do that? You know, I, I think actually this week was a great week uh, for, uh, for America with respect to the Second Amendment, right? The Supreme Court validated the fact that y you don't need permission to exercise your Second Amendment rights. And in the Senate, we pass legislation that makes it harder for criminals to get guns. And that's, that's what this does, right? There's, there's funds for mental health. There's, uh, there's, there are other aspects to this. But for the thing that I have long focused on, Paul, is having a more thorough background check system so that we have a better chance of preventing criminals and dangerously mentally ill people from obtaining firearms. And specifically, especially with respect to 18 to 21 year olds, we do have a little extra scrutiny in the event that uh, a young adult has uh, a prior adjudication of a mental illness or a criminal event. So I think this is good for keeping guns out of the hands of, of criminals and good for allowing law-abiding citizens to be armed. 
All right, let's turn to one of those other issues you mentioned, uh, inflation, uh, gas prices. Uh, what do you make of the president's uh, request that you guys on the Hill pass a 18 cent uh, a gallon federal gas tax holiday for three months? You know, th this would just be laughable if it weren't such a serious issue for people whose budgets are not are not uh, making ends meet anymore. Here's the president whose policies were completely designed to raise energy costs, to diminish production, to shut down pipelines, to, to limit new leasing, to do everything he could in a very conscious effort to raise the cost of fossil fuels, because that's what the left wants to do. Now that they've gotten their way, they're you know, the, the, the dog has caught the car and, and they've got a real problem on their hands. So, it, you know, it's almost laughable. This is not a solution to anything. It looks like an attempt to buy some votes uh, running up to an election that's going to be a disaster for them. Um, so we, we shouldn't fall for this nonsense. We should keep pushing the administration to reverse their anti-energy policies. All right, Senator Toomey, thanks so much for coming in. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me, Paul.